Welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Lifeline Series. We have a wonderful evening planned for you this evening. And so just sit back, relax, and just, just settle in for, for a wonderful discussion. And also, um, we look forward to your questions. We look forward to your comments. And we look forward to having you being a part of this wonderful experience. So before any further ado, I'd like to ask, our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to do our opening affirmative prayer. Reverend John. It's Andy and good evening worldwide family. It is a joy to add my own words of welcome and to do the opening affirmative prayer for this amazing lifeline experience with which we are sharing with you all. So let us just go within for a moment recognizing that we come with hearts full of grace, for that grace is God, given to all alike, the self-givingness of this spirit, the presence and power of the infinite invisible which fills our minds, our intellects, our senses, that presence and power which is pure love and which binds us together at this which we call a lifeline webinar with cords of everlasting unity, making us one, one God, one mind, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power, one love, one with each other, one with the infinite spirit, the living spirit almighty, and one with all of life. And so this evening's conversation takes place in this consciousness that there is only one of us here, it is God. 
and it is good and very good. So this word is released to law with a special blessing for our guest and for each person who is on this amazing webinar, knowing our collective consciousness glorifies God and lifts the energy of the planet up to a greater understanding of the glory and greatness of that which proclaims its love and gives of itself through each and every person to its own honor and glory. I give thanks that this is so, and so it is. So it gloriously is. Thank mm. you so much, Reverend John. And so I welcome each and every one of you again for this wonderful hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. This is the sixth time that we are meeting as a, as a, as a group for this Lifeline series. We've had a number of wonderful guests mm -hmm. uh, support us on this, this effort. And uh, it seems as if Lifeline is here to stay. We started it just around the, maybe about August, July, August, as a, a response to what was going on on the outside. We wanted to be able to provide some spiritual tools and strategies to enable us to, to rise above and, uh, uh, and consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. And we also wanted to provide support so that we could, could you know, we can all shift from having a fear-based um, thinking to, to, to feeling very positive and fully in charge, large and in charge of our life experience. Mm -hmm. So this evening we'll be together and we have with us a very, very special guest. And it is my pleasure to introduce her. Diverse background. And she is CEO of TAO or TAO, Leadership Development INC, where she has trained and coached thousands of leaders in organizations like American Express, PNG, HBO, PayPal, and Harvard Business School. She was a professional theater actress for several years after college. Most importantly, she grew up in religious science and has been a member of multiple CSL churches all over the country since childhood. <clears throat> in 1993, she became a licensed religious science practitioner at Agape under the tutelage of Reverend Michael Beckwith. <clears throat> Ray Sherrill is guest speaker workshop and retreat facilitator, board and business consultant to CSL churches. Currently, she serves on the CSL Leadership Council and is in ministerial school at Holmes Institute, expecting to graduate later this year, 2021. Mm, wow. Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is delighted, overwhelmed, overjoyed Absolutely. to welcome our very special guest this evening, Rachel McCrary. And we're going to be talking about spirit-driven service. Welcome, Rachel. Welcome, oh, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. I just can't stop smiling. So I'm glad to be <laughs> here with you. <laughs> yes. Well, so, you know, we, this topic came up because our church is going through some transformation at this time. <clears throat> and we're in the process of developing our strategic plan. We're really looking at, at very dramatic transformation. And one of the areas that we are focusing on is service. In fact, service is one of our core values generated out of that exercise. And so we wanted to have a conversation around service. I mean, we know what it is and we know we all serve. How do we take it to a higher level? What is spirit-driven service? Over to you. Beautiful, thank you. I love this topic. And as I shared with you um, when, I, when we, we met uh, to discuss this topic, I've had such a personal and rich experience of, of spirit-driven service and the benefits and the bounty and the abundance that flow from that. Mm -hmm. So I wanna share that when I, uh, about 2008 or nine, like many people all over the globe, I lost everything in the, in the Great Recession. Right. A lot of material things just evaporated. Um, and I had to start all over again and start my business all over again from the ground up. And 
Uh, and it was, it was uh, I'll just say it was interesting. You know, there was a challenge in it. And also as, as religious scientists and being a practitioner for a long time, I also look at, uh, you know, taking 100% responsibility for my experience and really learning and deepening and growing and standing in that truth uh, that God is all there is and abundance is the true nature of things. Mm -hmm. And what I found over the last decade as I've sort of rebuilt uh, my life is, um, especially over the last three years, the more I give, the more service I provide, I give at, uh, at CSL churches, particularly, because that's where I, I um, that's where I tithe my dollars, that's where I tithe of my talent and treasure. And what I found over the last three years, that the more service I offer, the more service I give, the more I give of myself, of my time, of my ideas, of my money, um, the more abundant my life has become. Mm. And, uh, and I was sharing with, um, I was sharing with you that about, um, I guess maybe about three years ago, I took the 4T Prosperity Program, which mm. I love that program. It's old school, but I totally love that program. And uh, I took that program and in my meditation, it came up for me to, uh, instead of tithing on my salary, for me to tithe on the gross revenues of my business. And I thought, what? You know, I had a I had a reaction to that, like what you know. I, I don't know, spirit. That's not what tithing. That's I don't think that's what tithing is. I don't know what we're talking about. And so anyway, I, t I tussled with it a little bit, but I knew I was going to be obedient to that. And so I began tithing on the gross revenue of my business, and it, it, the, the, all I can say is the sky opened up. Right, more opportunities, more clients. I mean, just flow in, in total flow. Uh, I noticed that, that that began to happen within a few months of, of doing that. And now for the last three years, I, I tithe on the, on the gross revenue of my business to the point where my bookkeeper, after the first year, asked me at the end of the year, he's like, what did you do differently this year? Like what, you know, um, you, you had some, some nice increases in revenue. What, what happened differently? And I said, you know, I've been tithing to my, to my center, to my church. Yeah. So I, that, that was one way that I saw that my giving service had a, and in this way, I'm speaking of tithing of treasure, right? Um, had a direct impact on my on my bottom line, on the on the robust abundance of my business and of my life. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I began to notice, uh, and I was speaking to some fellow colleagues about this, is the more time that I spend volunteering. So I'm on the leadership council right now for CSL and some other committees, and. The other thing I've noticed is the more I say yes to serving and volunteering, again, the more opportunities, the more ease, the more flow, the more abundance I experience in all areas of my life and my business and everywhere. And so I, I say that to say, it reminds me of something my grandmother would always say. And she, she would always say, you know, you, from, the, from the song, you can't beat God giving, you know, you can't outgive God. Uh, and I come from a tithing family. So my grandparents tithed and they, they really believed in that and taught that, those principles to us. But, um, but she would say, you can't outgive God, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think spirit-driven service is exactly that. What you're doing is you are, when you're in service, when you're in a place of service, it is a space of generosity. It is a space mm -hmm. of abundance. It is a space of you overflowing, allowing your treasure to overflow in whatever form. Uh, it is, whether it's volunteering to do the gourmet for God or, or volunteering to head up the pastoral care or do mm -hmm. prayer, whatever that service looks like, or bookkeeping or, uh, you know, the branding aspects of the church, whatever it is that you're called to do, it is the abundance of life calling you forward, calling you out. Mm -hmm. And then you become a portal through which that abundance continues to manifest and express in your life and in the lives of other people. And so, uh, that for me has been a, a big lesson that I've been in um, this year is, is I cannot beat God giving. And so when I'm, when I'm moved and I'm led by spirit to, to, to plant my treasure somewhere uh, and, to, and to donate time and, and services, then I, I do that. And it's not to get something. So I want to be very clear. It's not, uh, it's not like a quid pro, pro quo or a transactional thing that I'm after. It's just what I notice is when I say yes, and I, and I give that more is given to me wow. and more, more of my needs are taken care of. So that's been my experience of spirit driven service. Wonderful. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King, if I may, Sandy, um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that everyone can be great because everyone can serve. Yes. He said, you don't have 
to have a college education to serve. You don't even have to make your, uh, your subjects and your verbs agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. Yes. And yes. what I'm hearing from you, Rachel, is that heart full of grace has led you to give all that you have brought with you to make the planet a place that works for all. You're mm -hmm. really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. That, that is so very um, important. And, you know, I think about um, what you're saying, that the more, the more we open ourselves to give is, the, you know, we open a portal for God to pour, you know, all the blessings that we, we you know, we can imagine for ourselves and, and more. Um, you know, one of the, the challenges and the, the questions that I get and the, the pushback um, responses I get from, from some folks is, uh, and I feel it sometimes for myself, I just don't have the time. I'm so busy. How, how, do, how, how do we create that, that balance between, uh, you know, the, de the demands of, of service and, you know, the demands of our own lives? Well, you know, I, I've, it, it's sort of the same principle um, that, that, I'm, that I'm talking about, right? So the more you, when, when you truly are moved to give, when spirit is pushing you, right, or pulling you into service, mm -hmm. then the way it gets created for that to fit into your life, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's what I found. When it's really spirit driven, then the way is created for, for, it to, for it to fit within the context of everything else you're doing. And the other thing I find is that um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the book, um, The Big Leap by um, uh, Gay Hendricks. And he has this, this concept he calls Einstein time. And it's really that sort of flow state, right? Flow state that athletes mm -hmm. can get into, performers get into, where it's like time and space, you know, you realize it's, 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 an, you know, it's, it's a construct, right? And when you get into Einstein time, it's like you can, things happen uh, or you seem to have more time to get things done right? Or things get done faster than you think. I mean, there's a synchronicity that happens. And I think the same thing happens when you really are drawn into service and spirit is really, um, really uh, bubbling that up in you. Uh, it, it, will, it will arrange itself perfectly into your life and into yeah. your experience. I mean, that, that is, is really remarkable because what you're saying is that once my intention is there, you know, the human construct, so if my intention is pure and clear, then, you know, life is going to configure itself so that the time is available to me. I can do, I can find the time, I can do what I need to do in, in, in the perfect order, perfect time. Totally get that. Um, I think there's, there is a response in the chat. I think I saw something coming up from Carol. Oh, Carol Campbell is one of our um, practitioners, she says, the abundance of life calling you out to give. Love that. Yes. 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 I, I think the thing with time um, is also reflected in, in, in my experience of tithing. You have you get a hundred dollars and you really have two hundred dollars worth of, of 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 bills to pay, but you give ten, and somehow it's a mystical thing. The ninety dollars goes further than the hundred would have. Yes. I mean, I know that sounds sounds off the off the wall, but that's been my experience. That's been my experience too, and it's so interesting. I can tell, like, if, if I if I get it, you know, there have been times where I'll get into a fear state. We all do, right? Where where all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the look, you know, I'm looking at these li limited amount of dollars here. But when I get into that clutching state, then everything else dries up, right? Yep. And yep. when I'm in that faith state of yeah, I have $200 worth of bills. I got $100 here and I am freely and happily and joyously giving this, this 10. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it, the okay. abundance is unlocked by that, by, by, by your generosity. You know? So similarly with time, when you give your time mm -hmm. in, in service, you know, Margaret Weekly um, in turning to one another says, when you serve others, you gain more than hope, you gain energy. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's that it's somehow when you give of your time, the universe gives you more time. It wraps the time around you yes. and, and you're able to accomplish 10 yeah. times what you could. Yes. Yeah. Because of yourself, when, when, of yourself doing nothing, you know. Yeah. Mm. Because when you're giving, you're in the state and the consciousness of abundance. 
Absolutely. So it, it, you're, you're in the state of abundance, right? When you're saying, I don't know if I can do this because I don't have the money or I don't have the time, that's a state of lack. Yep. And so you just experience more and more lack and it's difficult and things are tight. When you're in, this, when you're in the zone of abundance and you're giving from that place, it, it, it is manifesting all around you because you're in that consciousness. So that's, that's what I've observed and been my experience. You know, um, different folks are at different places of their own spiritual unfoldment. Mm -hmm. And I would think it takes quite a bit of faith to just, you know, the equation of the $200 worth of bills and $100 cash available. Um, and so how do we, how, what do we say to, to folks who are really challenged and still sort of mired in, you know, holding on um, because they, they, they feel that they, they can't afford to give within time, talent, or treasure? Yeah, that's such a, that's such a good question. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I think that there's a part of me that wants to say, then just start where you are, you know, uh, dip, dip your toe right in where you are, um, because it's, it's easy to say, Oh, just, you know, just, just go for it. But, but here's what I found when, when you say to people who may not be ready to make a leap into, you know, they're going to tie 10% or, or whatever it is, they might not be there. When you say that it, it can, you know, people can then get into a transactional thing. Like, like, it's almost like gambling, like, you know, or an investment. Uh, I've seen people approach tithing as, as, as though it's an investment. Like if I do this, then I'm going to get this. Mm -hmm. And that makes it very transactional. And mm -hmm. that's not based on faith. That's based on, you know, very human. Like if I do this, then this is going to happen. Yes. And so I think it's best just to start from where you are, because to me, tithing and service is such a, um, it's so filled with love, right? Mm -hmm. It's so filled with loving the organization or loving what I'm serving, loving what I'm doing, loving to give. And that takes time to cultivate. Right, because I love it, and I love God, and I and I trust, and I and I know that God has my back. I know one plus God is a majority. I know that, but it but it's also taken time and experience and scraping my knee and starting off and pulling back and being afraid and going through all those cycles to get to a place of being solid. So I think if you're just starting out, um, start right where you are and just do one thing and just give one thing, whether it's one dollar whether it's one hour, whether it's one penny, whether it's one idea, just give that freely and abundantly and then try to do the next thing, right? And then if you just keep doing that consistently, Building you grow it. into that consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. And, and that then <clears throat> takes away the pressure of I have to, I should, I ought to, the church wants me to, or can I only give a dollar or a penny or what have you? And so the, the one has to just give with absolute freedom from the joy of giving rather than from a sense of obligation. Awesome. I'm seeing, um, let me just look at the chat here. Arlene is saying, when you have a giving soul and it makes you happy, how do you quiet the one saying you are doing too much? Oh, I hear my son talk to me like that already. Mommy, you can't believe you have this meeting at that and you're gone. You're doing too much. You need to stop. You need to rest. Totally get that, Arlene. What do you say to that, Rachel? Yeah, well, if you're, a <laughs> my first thought is, like, do we have to respond to this if you're happy <laughs> and if it's working well? Does it really require a response, a response from, from you know, to someone who's observing it, uh, thinking something's going wrong? But I, I think that, um, so, you know, again, is that, is that voice saying you're doing too much? Is that, is that, you know, a manifestation of your voice saying mm -hmm. that or having judgment about what you're doing? Are you truly through and through happy and at peace and at one, you know, at peace within yourself, at peace with spirit around what you're doing? Because uh, if you are, it really doesn't matter what other people are saying. Right. In Jamaica, and, we have a saying, we say, allow me, meaning allow me. Uh, Just allow yes. me, I'm happy. Yes. Thank so, you. I, know you, I know you are concerned out of love, but allow yes. me. Yes, that's what I say. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, there's, a, there's a follow-up question, at least uh, associated um, comments. Lilith says, should one feel overwhelmed when engaged in spirit-driven service? <laughs> oh, this is such a good question, because here's, here's what's really interesting. 
this is where you have to, I think, really be in your spiritual practice to make sure that what you're doing is spirit driven, right? Mm. So what I've found is that I've got a lot of opportunities that have been coming my way for more philanthropic work, like sitting on boards and serving on committees and doing these things, which I love to do. Uh, and I've had to, and my nature is to say yes, and then yes, get into overwhelm because I'm in school and I'm, you know, I run my business. And so what I've had to do is really be present, like be real present uh, to, you know, I just had a request come in um, two days ago uh, about something. And I was, my impulse was yes. And I was like, feeling like spirit is like, yes, you know, but I didn't commit in the phone conversation. And I said, you know what, I need to sit with this. I got to sit and make sure um, I want to say yes, I'm sure it's going to be a yes. And, uh, and I really sat with it. I really got present to what that particular, um, uh, what that particular role would require. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know what, I, with all I have on my plate, I can't, I can't, I could do it, but I can't be present the way I want to be. And I'm going to get myself into a state of overwhelm. And it became very clear to me, oh, as beautiful and perfect as this is, not now. You know, mm -hmm. Spirit's voice became very clear. And I realized that earlier, it was just like my pattern is to say yes. Like I'm gonna make it work. And, um, and, and then I am feeling you know, overwhelmed. So I would say if, if it's spirit driven, if it's really spirit driven, you won't feel overwhelmed because you'll know what the boundaries are. You'll know what to, when to say yes, when to say no. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you won't get into overwhelm when it's spirit driven. It's when it's human driven that I think the overwhelm kicks in. Yes. But so that then opens up a, a whole other conversation about, um, what am I listening to? What, mm -hmm. who am I, who am I being? Am I, am I, um, grounded in that space of, of loving me and valuing me and being open and receptive to the voice of spirits? Um, and not just, okay, oh, this is a new project. Um, yes, I, and you translate immediately. I think I, I've done that. Translate it into dollars and cents and bottom line and cash flow and, you know, and then I'm overwhelmed and I, oh, back to back stuff and I, you know, I, I feel it. So, so the, 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 who am I being in this role um, as, a, as a practitioner and, you know, one who is walking the path of truth? Um, led to service, but at the same time trying to balance. Who am I being and how do I ensure that my brightest and best, and I'm honoring myself and expressing my brightest and best? Yes, absolutely. And I think the key, and I think the key word of this, of this uh, topic is the spirit driven, right? Because um, even with great intentions, we can fall into certain patterns and behaviors and those are really the things that are speaking. Right, those are the things that are saying yes. That pattern, that 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 impulse, that habit, um, and it takes, as you said, um, Sandra, really knowing who am I, who am I being in this, and what is God, what is God's, what is God's true voice here? Mm -hmm. Like you have to really get still mm -hmm. and present to get that clearly, because our own patterns and habits, especially even the good ones, are so seductive. We don't even. <laughs> You know, it's like, of course, I want to serve on this committee. Of course, I want to volunteer. But of course, you know, all that's really good stuff. But, um, you know, my, my pattern was going to be to agree to that. And I had to really sit and get present to hear God's voice of like, oh, OK, no, 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 don't do this. This is not for you right now. So, yeah, it's really about who you be in this. I think one of the positive spin-offs of the pandemic actually has been that it's it's um, allowed us to seek new ways, if you will, of opening up the gift of who we are um, uh, to share with the world. Because, you know, w whereas you could have gone visiting, you know, people who aren't getting to church regularly, um, maybe your act of service can be making a commitment to call two people every day to say, I'm thinking of you, would you like a prayer? Um, you know, are you okay? Can I go to the supermarket for you or to the pharmacy? Mm -hmm. So we have had to find new ways of giving mm -hmm. and of serving. And it's been very enriching, at least for me, because then it's, it's called upon the creativity within yeah, us. The, the pandemic opened, you know, it quieted things. It made us sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it made us sit down and be quiet in, in a way that we're not that we're not used to so something new could really be born you know yes um it's so interesting right before the pandemic hit i um 
I had gotten, I was getting in, in meditation to spirit was saying to me, but you need to do more practitioner work. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to show me how I have time to take on practitioner clients. Like, what, what does this look like? Because, you know, I, don't, I have a lot on my plate. And so, but I was just hearing that and I was with it and I was open. I'm like, okay, but show me, show me what to do. And the pandemic hit and then it came to me to start a prayer group on Facebook. So I started, I started this prayer group and I pray with people Monday through Friday, nine to 9.30. And I talk a little bit and then I do prayer work and I pray for each person who's in the, on the live uh, thing. And that has been my way of being a practitioner. And wow. so um, that would have never, I mean, I actually don't really like social media. I don't really like being on it, but you know, <laughs> you, have to, you have to be on it. Um, so but I must say, you're on it very glamorously, really. Oh my gosh! I, <laughs> you know, it's 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 not it, it is not it would not be my choice. Let me just put it that way. But it is what it is. You know, you have to be on there. I would have never thought of starting a Facebook group and doing that. And and if someone had told me I'd be Monday through Friday in a Facebook group doing something, I would be like, that's yeah. that's impossible. But that's how my practitioner. That's how I'm doing the practitioner thing now, you know. Wonderful. Again, a new way of opening up the gift of yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a comment from Denise Webb English. Denise is in Toronto. She says, always be in your truth. It will guide us and set us free. Oh, yes, Denise. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Awesome. You know, we also evolved here at the Temple of Life because, you know, we, when we got to a point where we couldn't do services anymore, we just opened up, boom, and um, found a way to open up our service to the world through through Zoom and through Facebook Live. And I mean, even this program has come out of the desire to um, maintain our connectedness with um, with folks and, and our members. Okay, awesome. Wow, this is this is really 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 extraordinary. I'm I'm really liking the idea of um, I have to know, I have to listen to spirit. I have to listen to the voice of spirit versus the voice of ego. I can really, really guide me as to where I need to go and what I need to do. Yes. Another comment in the chat. Um, <laughs> um, oh, oh, these are my, yeah, these are my peeps oh. giving me a shout out for my yeah. prayer group. So, oh, hello, uh, yeah. always, um, yeah. Prosper. Yeah, and that's my mom, Reverend Sherry. Pray, pivot, and prosper is my prayer group. So I didn't say the name, so they're like put they're like putting it out there for me. So, yes. <laughs> um, Kathy Gonzalez, br brilliant, blessed PPP group. That's your group, is it? Yeah, yes. yeah, it is. Um, and can we take a moment just to to greet Reverend Sherry, that who is Ray Sherry's mother? Yeah, I, Reverend Sherry. Yes, that's Reverend a wonderful Sherry job you did, Reverend Sherry. Fellowship. Yeah, you did yes. good. My sister. <laughs> yeah, she's she is she is wonderful. I I uh, I always I told her I always told her when I was a kid I let her be the mom this time and I'm really glad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this time yeah. round. Yeah, I'm really glad. Really glad. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I'm really really excited about this time at the Temple of Light because we really are going into a, into a new realm of possibility, so to speak. And what's interesting is that the process that we're using for our strategic planning is, well, for want of a better word, very challenging. We're required to do some serious analysis. And for many of us, myself included, and I'm used to, I'm used to another type of um, process, but there's a lot of pushback. Oh, this is too hard. I'm not meant for this. Um, I... Um, I don't think I have the, the skills to do this. Yet it's the type of process that, that is creating growth both for the individuals who are participating and it will bring great growth for the church. How do we recognize when there is, uh, when the ego speaks to say, oh, you can't do this. Um, you're not trained for this or you don't have the time. I mean, this is continuing the conversation we've been having. How do we really fully just jump and and just know that spirit will catch us? Yeah, well, you know what? It's knowing the spirit's actually doing it, right? So that like, spirit is actually doing that which, be, which is before us to do. 
and it's I was just reading this I'm reading this book called the presence process and um, one of the one of the uh, principles is, or one of the statements uh, he makes is um, presence which is God knows no order of difficulty I think that's what he said knows no doesn't does knows no order of difficulty right so um, divine intelligence has all, already knows what temple of life is supposed to temple of light is supposed to be it already knows it already knows what the what the evolution is and how to uh bring it into effect and who needs to be a part of it spirit already knows all of that and so i think for all and for all of us when we get into that place of i don't know how to do i don't know what to do I'm, i've never done this before then we're assigning a level of difficulty to that thing because we don't know how to do it the spirit has no problem doing if we just get out of the way right so it's really back to divine intelligence already knows what it wants to be through each of us if we can just move out of the way and allow it to come forward allow it to manifest allow it to to work as us through us mm -hmm, great perhaps i could ask um those of you who are tuned in this evening to our lifeline what are some, what are some of the questions you might have um for sure just just um type them in and um you know we'll direct them um to her sorry you, you, you want to say something can i i want to circle back to to one thing we talked about um earlier about um when we we're talking about like giving of your time and your you know when you feel like you don't have enough time mm -hmm. and uh giving of your talent and treasure and one thing that i i think it's really important to remember uh, that I see sometimes in our centers that there's sometimes where I see that, or I feel or get the sense that, that there are some folks who want something for nothing, right? So they want to mm. come into the centers. They love the teaching. Um, you know, they've been liberated from traditional church or whatever they grew up with and they find religious science and they love it and they're taking it all in and they're changing their lives. Um, and they're not giving co commiserately, right? They're not, um, they're not um, you know, giving of their time, talent, and treasure in a way that's commiserate with the transformation they're experiencing in their lives. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's something about that, or they don't wanna pay for you know, a practitioner session or those kinds of things, but yet the same people will pay for a life coach or for you know, some, something else. And so there's something, um, there's something, you know, there's something ab about that, that, that I find that you can, you don't, you don't, the, it, the, the universe doesn't operate that way where you get something for nothing, right? So if your life is being transformed by these teachings, then the generous place to be would be to give and to plant into our centers, plant into our leadership and support mm -hmm. that versus Constantly absorbing all this great leader. stuff on Sunday. And, uh, and then you know, just, just not, not giving something. What, what are your thoughts about that, um, Reverend John? I, I, I totally agree. I, I think that, as you said earlier, you cannot outgive God, or your grandmother said, and it's true, you know. So, so I think when we, we, we ask the question, what gifts do I have that I can, I can give to the world, you know? Um, so, Everybody can't be a practitioner or a concert pianist or whatever, but everybody has something that they have brought with them mm -hmm. to share. And maybe a useful spiritual exercise would be for us just to spend a few moments uh, to say, what have I brought that I can share, that I can give back? Because when you come from a place of gratitude for what you are getting and what you are gaining and how you are growing and the, transform the transformation that's been happening in your life as a result of your participating mm -hmm. in this kind of in this kind of movement this kind of spiritual movement then then it is natural for me to say well how can i reciprocate mm -hmm. and and so we are blessed at the temple of life center for spiritual living with with a cater of people who really give you know it's it's always amazing that mm -hmm. the people who give give and give and give and give and give you know it's it's, yeah. it's amazing because they have learned like you have that that the more they give the more the universe pours into them, pressed down, mm -hmm. shaken together and running over yes. with their things. And so my prayer and my, my wish is that all who are touched by this amazing teaching, um, 
you know, I don't even care if, 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 if we get the credit for it. I just wanted to transform lives. I wanted to touch people into wholeness sure. so that people awaken to the glory of who they are and, and the, the power of spirit within them. You know, uh, I think Sandy was saying, quoting Holmes earlier, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And I've turned that around in my own experience to say there's a power for good in the universe and it can use you. Yes. To make this world really a worthwhile experience. And now more than ever, when we see what's happening all over the world, now is the time for us to give of ourselves to humanity and, and to just embrace our brotherhood and our sisterhood across the globe. So this is why I'm so just wonderfully happy to have you. Um, because, you know, I don't even know where Sacramento is, you know, I just, I mean, I know basically intellectually, but I've never been. And yet still we have, we have this connection. Yes, you know, yes. Um, well, I'm in Phoenix. You're in Phoenix, yes. I'm no, in the desert. We were talking about Sacramento earlier. Um, yeah. Thank you, Temple of Light. How lovely to be with you from Sacramento. That was somebody there. Oh, it's Kathy, Kathy Gonzalez. Yes. Which is lovely. And, and suddenly with this pandemic, we have found that we have brothers and sisters everywhere. Oh, yes. You know, you're my brethren, you're my sister in, as we say in Jamaica. Me, yes. you know, me and you are combolo. Remember, we taught you come below in our little meeting. Right. Come below. <laughs> come below meaning it means you know you're you're really tight, you know. Right. Come, come below. Come below. Our peeps. You're come below. I love it. I love it. So we I are come below. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You wow. know, I was thinking when you were when you were talking about uh, the ways that 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 service has has evolved and and um, sort of rebirthed itself for you since during the pandemic. And I was thinking how wonderful and beautiful it is with the Lifeline program that you're global. And uh, you have people from all over who will be watching these episodes and tuning in to, to church. And uh, it's the, the pandemic, or I call it the pandemonium, has yeah. really um, you know, thrown open the windows and doors for, 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 for a lot of our churches to be global. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. That well, that's been our experience yeah. as well. Yeah. And there's, uh, a there's a recognition too. a comment right. from, from Reverend Sonia. Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw that. Um, she says, the question I ask myself is, am I an observer or am I a, am I a participant in this church, this teaching? Yes. Mm. Yes. Because mm. yes. uh, there's so many of us who come, we sit at church on a Sunday morning. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I'm deeply touched, moved and inspired and so on. And then that's it. What's the extent to which we are really embracing and embodying the teaching, the taking it as we drive, as we work, as we engage with our family members, as we do what we do, and we are being the, 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 the teaching, you know, that, that is the challenge. That is the challenge. Yes. I mean, the thing is that you, I, I love our vision statement, you know, a world that works for everyone only happens if we birth it, mm -hmm. if we be it. Yes. Right. It, do, it doesn't happen because we say it or because we want some people over there to do something differently. A world that works for everyone means everyone. Right. Or at least those of us who are awake and really wanting that have to be that. And we have to birth that in our individual experience, in our community, in our, our spiritual communities. That's how it happens. It doesn't happen. from I, some was, other group. I was typing on that. I was um, journaling on that, too. I should type on it, too. Um, I was journaling on it and it came to me, the world already works for everyone, you know? It works for everyone at their level of consciousness. Yeah. So the, the challenge really is for us to, to, uh, to help people to awaken yes. to what is there, what yes. the gift has been given, yes. you know? Um, it's all been given, there's nothing more, you know, it's all there. So what we have to do is to open ourselves to receive. Mm -hmm. And in opening ourselves to give, we are also open to receive. Because you can't, you can't get anything if your hands are, 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 are grasping onto what you have. You have to open. Yes. To give, and when you open to give, you also have room to receive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, practitioner Vance just um, brought a, attention to the fact that in this one, Science of Mind magazine, um, Reverend Kevin Kittrell Ross has this really, really wonderful article the evolutionary journey from practitioner to way shower. Mm. And that practitioner is, uh, is, a, is, is like a doing, 
but being Weisho is a being. Who are who am I being in, mm. in, in this teaching? And 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 as I give, as I give of myself, my heart, my time, my talent, my treasure, I am really carving a path for others to 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 be their brightest and best, to be their best self, to embrace their own um, spiritual magnificence. You know, mm. so to really. Uh, rise to that place of way short it's, it's a, an amazing article mm. so we bless him and thank him for yes. that contribution this month um oh lorna uh, phillips what is your advice for how we might support our well, let me open this up um, um your advice for how we might support our colleagues to give from where they are if something is telling them that what they have isn't much or as clever or whatever as others. Now, Lorna, by the way, is the chair. She was a former chair of our thriving ministry um, council, and she was the one who, who, who she's leading our planning effort. So what do we tell others who are just, you know, um, what I'm doing is not much, I'm not as clever, I'm not as whatever. What do we say to these folks? So I think I think Reverend John said it so beautifully in the Martin Luther King quote, and then also just saying that that uh, giving from right where you are, right where right where you are, and what you have right now is valuable, mm. whatever whatever that is. And you know this, I think when when um, when folks in our community feel like they have nothing to give, it's because sometimes they're comparing, right, or comparing. Uh -huh. um, well, you know, that, you know, Reverend, Reverend John is the, is the minister. I'm, I'm not a minister or so-and-so is a practitioner or so-and-so is, yeah. is whatever. Yeah. So there's a comparison that takes place um, and it's all based on appearances, right? Each of us has a role to play. Each of us has, um, you know, hearkening back to, to, to the world of theater and acting, right? There's some people who are, who are great, um, you know, great leading, you know, their, their, their roles and their destiny is to be a leading, leading man or leading woman, right? Uh, other people, they're great supporting actors or they're great character actors or other people are great comedic or, uh, or other folks find out, you know what, I'm not supposed to even be in front of the camera or on stage. I'm supposed to be actually stage managing from behind. Like we all have our role to play and all of it is equally as valuable, yep. right? So the, the um, cactus outside my window is not comparing itself to the um, orchid inside. <laughs> to the orchid inside, right? It's not going well. I'm not, you know. It, it, it's just it's just, it has its own purpose, its own gifts, its own assignment, yeah. uh, and we all have that as well. And so I think helping people not compare themselves uh, because it's equally as valuable to have a, a Martin Luther King, a Reverend Martin Luther King, as it is to have. Um, someone who is uh, serving coffee in at the center or, mm -hmm. or setting up chairs Equal, those the god god doesn't have any more value on any one of those those places and spaces mm -hmm. okay so i'm i'm there, there are three things that have stood out for me and you know the start where you are okay know your gift mm -hmm. you know what you have been blessed with um, to not compare, that, that was the last point that you made. But if we were to add to this and, and say to our, our, our congregants, our members, um, ooh, all right, I'll, I'll soon come to Carol's comment. Um, if we were to say what, if there were three things or three more things that you could practically do to, to, to really be in alignment with that spirit-driven service that we're talking about, what would those three things be? Hmm. Well, the first thing is you have to, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're doing your spiritual work, right? You've got to ha have a relationship, an intimate relationship with spirit. With God. Mm. And because that is the way that you are, are, can be spirit, really spirit driven and be awake about the decisions you're making. So I would say the first thing is to really have a relationship with God. Um, mm. And that would be the first thing. The other thing I would say is 
when you have that relationship where you're sitting and listening, right? And you're, you're praying and talking to God and you're in relationship, then it becomes clear what, a little bit clearer what you're to do. You get an urge or a nudge or someone brings something to you and, and it's like, ah, it's, it, that's exactly the right thing I should do. Um, and so I don't know if I'm being real crisp about this, but, but that is sort of the, the second thing I would say is that, um, that synchro you'll, you'll see that synchronicity kick in and, and bring things right in front of you to do. And mm -hmm. then I think maybe the third thing I would say is um, don't should all over yourself or judge yourself, start where you are. What can you give freely from your heart right now? No, no strings attached with love and joy. What can you give and plant somewhere right now okay. and do that? Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Let's look at the chat. Mm. Carol says, right, Reverend Jane, I read a quote this morning which said, um, quote, the most efficient and effortless way to achieve your vision is to be the person living the vision. Yes. Say, Cheryl, you're an incredible light. Oh, and so, so say all of us. <laughs> I'm just, you know, remembering something that I read from Joel Goldsmith in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, and he says, and I quote, you should have but one purpose, and that is the development of your own spiritual capacity and spiritual endowment, yes. bringing into activity in your consciousness the spiritual presence and power that is God. Wow. So as you said, Rachel, really, if we, do, if we have to develop a relationship you know, with that indwelling presence and power. And it's a daily yes. pausing to make that connection. And in fact, pausing several times a day. So okay. we just talked about the acronym STOP. You know, when you when you just pause during the day, stop, take a deep breath, that's a T. And then, you know, observe how you're feeling and thinking and then yeah. proclaim the truth that God is all there is in my life and then proceed with what you're doing. If we did that four or five or six times a day, it would just keep us centered in the consciousness that is really the only thing that we need to worry about. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you are I, an amazing light. Yes. It's just yeah. shining out of you. Thank you. I noticed that when I asked the question about what three things we could do, um, that you stopped and you closed your eyes. And it's to me, what, what I experienced in that is that you asked spirit, what should I say? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do. I'm like, God, move through me. What, what is it you want to say right here? Right. So, yeah, I try to try to come home, stay at home. <laughs> yes, exactly. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. 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 With, with God, you know, yeah, I'm founding minister, Reverend Dr. Emma Lumsden, who, who is, is no longer on this plane. She used to do it with everything. She would open her closet and say, Father, what I must wear today. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, she just consulted with spirit on everything. Yeah. 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 I'm a big, I, I, I have conversations with God. My, my mom does, my grandmother does, which is, you know, where you just, it's just, it's, it's just a relationship. Right. So there, I'm just, just earlier, I was, I'm, I don't even know what it was, but I was like, Lord, what, please, you know, please tell me what, whatever it was. Yeah. And then I just went on about my way. And then, you know, sooner, sooner or later, whatever it was, will come, come into Yes. You know, somebody said, when you talk to God, we call it prayer. When God talks to you, they call it schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll stay very quiet about my, <laughs> <laughs> my conversation. <laughs> oh, um, let's get back to the chat. Um, Courtney says, the giver will be compensated. And this is a law. No matter how the receiver values are paid for the giver's contributions. Um, and that's his, his understanding of Emerson's essay on the law of compensation. And we have- And Courtney's Sharon, a practitioner, by the way. Sharon, Sharon Judith, the 11th commandment. I think this is a quote here. Thou shalt not compare, Reverend Sherry. Yeah, that's what my mom always says. Thou shalt not compare. That's the 11th commandment. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it. Yes, use people at their strength, at their strength level, not what we need them to do. And Kathy, this is Kathy's one of yours, right? And from yeah. Sacramento. How would you support someone to remain higher? Oh, that's a good one. Hmm, yeah. So how to support someone to remain higher? Hmm. 
Yeah, you know, it's really one of the things that I, when I teach classes, um, one of the things I talk about is you have to have your structures of support, right? So you have to have, you know, when you're in spiritual learning and growing and, and just in life, but particularly when you're on a spiritual path and you're in classes or you're a practitioner, you need structures of support. You need people who are going to help you stay high, right? Who are going to still help you stay in a high consciousness. Like you need your practitioners. You need to, you know, make sure you have um, your spiritual tools, your, your journaling, your, your books, your, um, you know, even your, your colleagues or, or people who speak the same language. Um, all of those things help you, help support you. There's, there's structures that help you stay high. Go to church, take classes, um, and stay plugged in to high vibrational activities and things. And that helps you, you know, I always say like, don't look down, you know, walk on the water, do not look down. Yes. Um, and you, but you need that support around you because all of us have those moments where we falter or yes. we stumble. Yes. Well, what I do, the gift that I give my classes when I'm teaching is I have a list of the participants and every morning when I'm doing my spiritual work, I pray for them individually, not as a group. I call mm -hmm. each name individually and I, I usually say, what do you want me to pray for you for this week mm -hmm. from one class to the next? Mm -hmm. Just to keep them, keep them at a level, mm -hmm. well, to keep my consciousness of them at a high level. Yes. Because when I see them as, as God sees them, then they have to remain up there because, yes. you know, it's, they, they don't need to go any higher. We are all there already. Yes. So what we're talking about is the awareness yes. of the glory and greatness of God within us. Yes. 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 Wow. Well, John, that's that's one of the things I love about being a practitioner yes. is that we are charged to see the truth and to hold space yes. um, for others. And sometimes they can't see it themselves. If they've come to us, they usually can't see it themselves. They can't Absolutely. hold that. And our charge yes. is to hold that space for them. Absolutely. And that is such a beautiful, beautiful assignment. Thing. It is a beautiful yes. assignment. Yes. 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 Well, yes. you're going to be an even more awesome minister. Wow, uh, wow. We yeah. hold the space. That's a Thank lot. Thank you. I have you know, a few more months. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you, go. We, there could, you go. we could do this all evening. I'm just looking at the clock and I'm going, oh, it's almost <laughs> seven o'clock. Our hour is almost done. Um, Theo says, stop, take a deep breath. Observe what you are thinking and feeling and proclaim the truth and proceed. That is a stop. Acronym. Yeah, acronym. Acronym. Thank you, Theo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ray Sherrill, you have been amazing. A couple of months, it will be Reverend Ray Sherrill. Well, so, yes. A little longer than that, but but it'll it's it's within sight. I'm, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel. I see it. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. And and I, I mean, you are you are already God's chosen and a wonderful practitioner of this truth. Thank and you. we so, so appreciated you having been here. Of course, you know, this is, the, you are in trouble now. Oh, yes, we have claimed you. You are. <laughs> um, Sandy, can I, can I give a shameless commercial for Vista 2021? I'm so happy to, to share with you, um, Ray Sherrill, that the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living will have two workshops that are on, on um, uh, February, ooh, the 17th from 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 4 to 5 15 eastern standard time one is by lorna phillips who is on the call with us this evening and she will be presenting a workshop on inclusive leadership which Beautiful. i think would be of interest to a yes. lot of people in your neck of the woods yes and i will be co-facilitating um a workshop with practitioner diane Diedre. Um, the same day, and I don't know why I sent us to Spiritual Living this at the same time, February 17th, from 4 to 5, 15, and that is on our, our prison ministry. So it's called Blame, Shame and Regret to Keep People in, in, in Prison. <laughs> and how do, we, how do we handle that? How do we express? So uh, I want to invite you to, to both those. And our choir will also be singing on the musical evening, which I, I don't have the time for yet. But we, I'll Wonderful. keep you advised. Or, we will have Steve Golding, who who does an amazing chant, and and then the choir doing doing a piece written by it's a it's a piece set to music by our late musical director Noel Dexter, who was just a oh. masterful musician. It's really yes. beautiful. So um, join us for that. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, beloved, you're you're most welcome. So wow, I mean, do we have to go? Or do we have? To 
We have to hear Ray Sheryl treat. Oh yes, indeed. So, so you know, this this has been a, a, an absolutely wonderful time spent together, and, and um, I just embrace all of you folks who are who joined us on Facebook Live, who've been part of this process, who are you know part of um, Ray Sheryl's combola. Uh, yes. Wonderful you Jamaican word, word meaning your um, your hearts your heart strings, so to speak. And so if, if um, we invite um, your contribution, if, if, if you're so moved to support the work we're doing here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, um, we, um, you know, Theo, perhaps you can just speak to, I think, the, the, um, the PayPal um, link, Theo. Are we, are we up on that with the, with the link, Theo? So we normally post our PayPal link on the Facebook page. So for those who follow our page, they can keep a look, uh, look out for it. The PayPal link is there. There's also a PDF, which just showing you other options to donate to us, whether it's a transfer to our bank account and those who are here with us can also leave it at the temple. Yes, awesome. Thank you thank so much. You. So we just like to hug you up, to love you up, to thank you so much for being part of this amazing journey with us. We love you, we appreciate you, we bless you, and we'd love to invite you to close us off with our closing affirmative prayer. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I love you guys. And this is just the beginning. We are excited. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. So we just turn within now, just settling right into the very center of our beingness. In that place and space where we know absolutely there is only one thing happening, and it is God, and it is good. We just bask in this awareness. We bask in the palpable presence of pure spirit that is everywhere, everywhere. And so I know that this presence, this power, this grace that is everywhere is my very life. It is, it is my true identity. And so I speak the word from a place of absolute oneness, knowing that I am a divine and unique expression of the one, knowing that each one here is a divine, unique expression of the one life, the mm -hmm. one presence, the one power. And so this word is spoken in absolute confidence as I claim and proclaim for all of us, for each of us, that life is good, life is good, and we are blessed in every way, every shape, every form, every situation, every experience, we are blessed through and through, top to bottom, inside out, we are blessed mm -hmm. in all that we do and all that we be and all that we see in every place and every space. I speak a special word right now for Temple of Light CSL, knowing it is God's divine idea blossoming and flourishing and and growing and unfolding that the abundance of life is, is just unfolding through every, every part of the strategic plan and every part of the, of the choir and, the, and, and through every, every sermon, every talk from Reverend John, everything is blessed concerning CSL, just as a concerning Temple of Light CSL. And that all is well, abundance is established and overflowing that people are drawn from far and near to the message, to the light, to the, to the light, to the lighthouse that is Temple of Light CSL. This is the truth I know and I claim. Reverend John is blessed, guided, directed, and protect, protected as, as is each individual in this community, just blessed, protected, mm -hmm. wrapped in the love of God. This is what I know. This is what is. And I am so thankful for this word. I'm so thankful for each person who listened in, knowing that each one is blessed by the word spoken. I give thanks for this awareness, for this truth. I give thanks for the presence of spirit that is right here always. And I release this word knowing it is fulfilled completely. So we let it go. We just say, and so it is. And so, and so it, it is. Beautifully oh. is. Oh, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Reverend John, I'm going to let you have the last word. Oh, uh, well, if, if I want Reverend Sonia Davidson to have the last word. She said, wonderful radiance, Ray Sheryl. Oh, so I, we like to say it's no mistake that our founding minister called us a temple of light. I see you as a temple of light, a temple of that 
light that just leaves no dark spaces upon the face of the earth. God bless you. Go with you and bring you back to our hearts again and again. We love you. And so it is. So it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, technical team. Thank you, audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.